Hello everyone and welcome to the eighth episode of the Optimistic Urban Stutter Fibers podcast. <laughs> My name is Leah and I am podcasting from Kansas City. Um, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, crocheting, a lot of fiber related things and some random creativity and um, sometimes a little bit about our urban stud too. So hello and welcome. Welcome back to those of you who are watching uh, this podcast again, and uh, welcome to those of you that this is your first time. So let's get started. A couple of disclaimers. Um, it is warm again back in here, uh, back in the bedroom where I'm shooting this, so if you see me visibly sweating or my face is really red, that's why. So I apologize about that. Little bunny ears in the background. <laughs> um... Also, every time I get ready to shoot the podcast, uh, the wild child is awake and kicking and uh, usually unhappy. So I've got the um, I've got her in the room next here, and she's all set up, and she's got all her just about everything she could want, except to, to be exactly in the room with me. So we'll see how that works out. Hopefully, she'll be quiet and and uh, we can enjoy doing this podcast. So, oh, a couple more things. Um, I blog on WordPress.com. I'm the Optimistic Urban Stutters, and I've also got the Optimistic Urban Stutter Fibers podcast, which is where this and all of the show notes uh, for the podcast can be found as long as I can remember to put them on there. So um, if I've forgotten or there is something that you would particularly like to see that I haven't put on there, uh, just shoot me a message and let me know. I'm um, also Mrs. O. Urban Stetter on Ravelry, and uh, we have an Etsy shop called Color Coordination, and a uh, brand new thing just started on Instagram, which is very, very exciting. She's, she's checking it out to see what's going on in here. Um, but the name on Instagram is optimistic underscore urban stutters underscore fibers. And that is us there on Instagram. <laughs> so, yes, a little bit about us. I'm very excited about that. It's been, I think it's been over two weeks since I've podcasted. And I did a podcast, uh, I videoed one, I don't know, last week. And I really didn't like it and I haven't had time. It's just, it's been extremely stressful every time I've tried to podcast. So instead of uh, stressing myself out more and rushing around and it just wasn't going to be enjoyable and probably not anything anybody would want to watch, so I thought I would just uh, do it a little bit more at my leisure and just see what we do instead of trying to make everything perfect. So anyhow, I'm looking at the little baby bunnies sitting over here. So maybe we'll start with those. The fluffies that I have today are baby French Angoras and they are officially weaned. So they will probably be going to their new home soon, which um, I'm very excited for whoever gets them for their fiber and they are just such sweet little babies. So I'll show those to you. So this is, this is our one little male. He's going to get feisty now. This is our one little male. He's a he's a broken fawn, so he's got a lot of tan, but he's got a, a bit of white too. You sure are getting feisty, aren't you? And they're just hippity hopping in this basket down here. And we've got two females. This is one. Um, this is actually our first uh, single color rabbit, I guess. Um, but she is all fawn, and she is just beautiful, aren't you, sweetie? Just gorgeous. Look how fluffy they are getting. So sweet. And a little bit feisty. And then this is our last one. And she is mostly white and got little bits of, um, the fawn color, the little brown color on her. So, yep. There's the little babies. They're so sweet. Somebody will be so happy to have them. The wild child loves to sit down in the basket and give all of them hugs. And uh, <laughs> they sit there and lick on her. Um, and she just loves it. They sit there and tickle her. 
today I'm drinking coffee because it is early in my day and this is uh, Sunday it's the 28th Sunday August 28th but I'm uh, drinking coffee because my day is just starting and I can never have enough coffee when I'm just waking up so let's go ahead and get into it um <clears throat> I have a few finished objects. I just because I haven't podcasted, I have been um, doesn't mean that I haven't been doing anything. I've been very, very busy. So the first FO, ta-da! There it is. It's all done. It's my campfire. Stuck. Stuck. Okay, sweetie. And it's stuck. So. <laughs> So here it is. Uh, the cabling is all done. Sweetie, go sit down and play with your pencils. Um, it is all completely done. I blocked it out pretty aggressively, and I posted um, a picture of it on Instagram. Just the corner of it with King Tut. He's in there with a wild child right now. And uh. Yeah, I'm I'm just so pleased with it. I've been wearing the heck out of it. Um and I blocked it really aggressively. I may share some pictures on that. But uh it came out absolutely ginormous and I'm so pleased with this and I could not be happier to have it done. Um I ended up using five skeins of the uh natural cream alpaca that I spun up on my hand spindle. And this is mostly sport. There's a little bit of fingering in there. But, um, yeah, I used five skeins of it. And I probably could have used six if I wasn't ready to have it done. But it still came out to a, a pretty great length. I think it's just, like, a tiny, tiny bit shorter than I wanted it to be. But I think it came out beautifully. So, so happy. Look at it. It's amazing. Yes. Um, the next thing that I was working on was a Christmas gift, and I've been been getting a whole lot into the Christmas gifts because uh, I think I go overboard on trying to craft things for people. <laughs> but I wanted to get a head start so I could get some things done um, before it's too late and I'm scrambling around to try and get things done. So, here is my second Christmas present. Uh, last time I think I showed you is a, it was like a bright... Um, pink purple. Let me see. This one is uh, called Dark Mauve and it's actually coming out a whole lot more blue. This is like a it's like a dusty uh, purple gray color and it is coming out really really blue. But this is for another one of my nieces and um, the colorway for this is Dark Mauve. Uh, this is a super bulky acrylic 3.5 ounces of it and I didn't use the whole skein. Um, I thought I was going to play yarn chicken and I didn't end up doing that. But this is just a pattern that I made up. I think I cast on 48 stitches and I used a size 5 millimeter DPNs. And I used my um, circular one, or I used circular needles for this bottom part. But up here, um, because I wanted to get it more loose without increasing, I switched to size 8 um, and I tried to use circular for this as well but it didn't work out at all um, so I switched to DPNs and that worked beautifully so I did the uh, bamboo DPNs on that and then I switched I did about an inch two inches of that and then I switched to a nine millimeter excuse me and then um, finished it up from there so this was loosely based on the cafe hat that I did before obviously it's a lot more chunky yarn but um, it's kind of with that same idea in mind and uh, then I made this pom-pom this is not the prettiest pom-pom in the world uh, I actually I had it all put together and I thought I had tied the string around the middle part tight enough and I didn't. It was coming all to bits. So I had to take it and take all of the little bitty strips and line them all up and tie them all together and trim and trim and trim. And it's still a super fluffy pom-pom. Just a minute. 
Okay, I'm back again. King Tut's in here too. Um, anyhow, so uh, I made this hat and I just kind of made up the pattern and I'm actually uh, pretty happy with it. I think it came out really well. I was trying to do like a big baggy beanie <clears throat> because my niece has a whole lot of hair and I wanted her to be able to put her hair up in it um, and still be able to wear it quite a bit. So I think it came out very well that way. Um, and the yarn was a little bit splitty, but it's also, I mean, I guess it, it still came out okay with the larger needles. They weren't too sharp. And I guess I can put this on here. Ta-da! But uh, I wanted to make sure that the, the brim was nice and tight and that it would stay on and then there was plenty of room in the back and then I just did the fun pom pom and then this is just a uh, scrap yarn that I had I think it was gracious <laughs> I think it was a uh, simply soft um, Karen yarn that I had left over from forever ago so there it is there's what another one of my Christmas presents and I'm I'm very very happy with it I hope she'll enjoy it I think I think it's her style, I think it's her color, but um, we'll see if she really likes it. So, that is my second finished object. Um, <clears throat> my third and fourth finished objects are actually part of, I guess I don't know if they categorize as a whip yet, <laughs> because I haven't cast them on. But they, um, gracious. This is for... Uh, cow, the Sherlock cow that I was doing with um, the knitted broomstick and this is my colorway that I dyed up specifically for that. It's 221B and I did it with uh, the Victorian theme in mind. I think I showed the fiber on my last podcast but this is uh, what I had done. Now originally I had spun this up and was going to use this and it turned out to be just a little bit too small it ended up being 241 yards and I wanted to make the Sherlock socks um, but because I'm brand new to sock knitting I wanted to make sure that I had it, all the yarn that I needed and that I wasn't going to have to mess with the pattern because it's a little bit scary as it is it's, I think it's a toe up socks is what the pattern is for and I just I, I didn't want to mess with the pattern too much and this was not quite enough yarn to do that in. So I went ahead and started spinning another skein. And here it is. Um, and it's all rolled up into a ball ready to go. But I have two skeins of this now and the cal is almost over. It ends um, the end of August. And I have not cast these on. I think we have three days left now. And I have another humongous project that I want to finish by then. Not humongous, but um, I have another project that I have to get started on that I want to finish before then. And this is going to have to be a project that I do uninterrupted um, because it's going to take a whole lot of focus for me to figure out what on earth that I am doing. So, I don't know. I don't know if I can cast it on. I might cast it on. I might um, just wait until I completely finish the project that I'm, I'm wanting to do before I even start. I don't know, but we'll see. But I have these two done, and this is rolled into a center pull ball, and um, it's ready to go, but I just don't know if I'm ready to use it yet. So, so there's those ones. Um, so for works in progress, I was working on the honey cowl, and uh, that was going to be my cozy cowl. I was doing that in a very um, lightweight, I don't think it was lace, it might have been lace, or at least, at very least, a light fingering, but it had, uh, I think, over 500 stitches on it all the way around. And while the pattern was fairly simple, it's very noticeable if you mess up on it, or it's very noticeable to me. Um, because it's like an alternating pattern. It's a free pattern, so I'm not giving anything away on that. But um, I had just gotten to the point where I had messed up and I wasn't... I could still sort of fix it and move on. And then I would have a small mistake or 
Anyhow, I just ripped the whole thing out because I didn't, I didn't want to spend that much time working on something for it to have this obvious mistake in it and for me to sit there and look at it every time that I see it. And that would just, while it's a, I don't mind things that aren't perfect. I don't at all. In fact, I think it gives it a lot of character, but as far as usable items, I didn't want it to be a humongous thing in the middle of, in the middle of the cowl, um, to be in my face. <laughs> this ginormous mistake to, to bother me every time I looked at it. So I, I'm also not very good at tearing back and I would have had to tear back a lot of rows. I would have had to like thread the needle through several rows back or something and I, I just don't know how to do that yet and so I just got impatient and tore it all out and that is the reason why when it's something that I'm very I'm very vested in I don't want to spend a lot of interrupted time on it because I will mess it up and then I will be super unhappy <laughs> and that's no fun for anybody so Anyhow, so I had that work in project, but uh, progress, gracious, I don't know what's wrong with me today. But I have this one that I have been working on for quite some time, and um, it's also been sitting for quite some time, and I want to have it done before the end of the month, um, because I like to get it sent off to the person who wants, or for the person that it is meant for. I'm really having some issues today, guys. I do apologize. But, um, <clears throat> this is going to be a chicken apron. Um, and it's got the full front on it and these, and it's a little bit ruffled. But it's got, like, um, a blanket stitch around that I'm doing to attach the crochet chicken border to. And, um, I've got to go all the way around. I haven't even made it all the way around with this. So I've still got quite a ways to go doing the blanket stitch and it'll go much faster once I actually start crocheting. This actually takes about the longest is doing this border. But um, it's something that I'm going to have to spend a lot of time focusing on because I haven't done the crochet pattern before and I've got to figure it out. It's more um, follow the pictures type of thing and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. So. We'll see how that goes. This is, but this is the project that I am wanting to get done in the next few days. We'll see how that goes. Golly, I just have so much that I want to do. I've got really sidetracked with it um, because of because of the. I just got in some new fiber, and I have been working on that like a crazy person, and I've been so excited. I I couldn't ignore it. I couldn't put it away and ignore it. I just had to mess with it. So I guess I can go ahead and share that with you now. Oh, as far as the um, pattern for the crochet, I think I'm going to go ahead and share the link. Uh, I'll go ahead and share the link for that on the blog. Um, but if anybody has any questions on it, I'll show it to you as I'm going along. Okay, oh, here we go. So, what I got in was some Shetland sheep and some uh, black llama and alpaca. I think it's alpaca wool. Uh, there's, a, there's a lady, she lives it's probably about an hour and a half away from here, but she's got a whole lot of fiber animals on her farm, and she had some unused fiber that she hadn't been able to do anything with. So Mr. Optimistic and I and uh, the wild child went and got in the car and drove some uh, shady back roads, which was my fault, <laughs> to go and get this fiber uh, to meet her in a little town. And I'm so, so happy to have it. It was in the works for a couple of weeks and I was so excited, but I felt like it wasn't going to happen. So I didn't want to get too excited, but I still was. But um, we finally got it, and I guess it's just over. 
she said it was over uh, 60 pounds. I haven't weighed it all out, but it is um, five grocery bag or five um, big old trash bags full of fiber that she had, and three of them were Shetland, and then two of them um, were the other fleeces, and. I'm so excited to use them, you guys. It's a natural black wool, and one of them is like a super dark uh, chocolate color, and it is just beautiful. But the Shetland is beige, and I will show these to you. I was watching uh, Andre Sue Knits, her podcast, and she was rolling these, uh, their poonies is what they're called, and they're like Rolex off of a hand carter or a... Or a um, mixing board, uh oh, a hand carter or a mixing board, but she was using uh, dowels or, or little sticks to make them so much more neat, and I thought that was a brilliant idea. So I've actually been using knitting needles, but they have been coming out so much better and so much cleaner and nicer. But this is my Shetland wool, and um, I actually spent quite a long time preparing this the other day, but I just couldn't stop. I had to wash it and, um, well, I had to take it apart <laughs> because it was felted together at the ends. I think, I thought it might have been felted because it had been sitting in the bags, um, but now that I've been looking at it, it's only felted on the very tips. So I think it was, I think it was um, starting to felt quite a bit on the sheep itself, so... And then this is uh, the Black Llama. So there it is. Ta-da! I'm so excited to use this. This is for another project that I have in mind. But um, I haven't washed this llama. All I did was cart it out. I fluffed it and carted it out. And so it's still got some vegetable matter in. But it will come out once I'm... Once I'm messing with it more. And I think this llama had some white spots on it. It has Tip little up. white... Tip up. Uh huh. That's okay. Um, it's got some white guard hairs in it. Just a minute. Okay, I'm back again. <laughs> we'll try this again. And get through it. I promise. Gracious, it has been a day. So, guess the plans that we have versus what works out. So, um. I went ahead and processed the Shetland and uh, I washed it three times and rinsed it once and it had a tremendous amount of things come out. See it's still got like a tiny little bit of vegetable matter despite everything that I have picked out. But it came from a sheet so what do we expect, right? But uh, yeah there it all is. tell you what, once you have been uh, not podcasting in a while, it definitely get off of your game. So how have you been spinning it? I've been spinning the black llama and um, I think what I want to do, I want to do the discovery of witches along with uh, Jelly on the knit of broomstick that she's doing for this next month. I think they're doing a Hocus Pocus along as well on, um, oh, what is the podcast? I swear, I'm losing my mind today. Um, it's going to make me crazy. Legacy Knits, they're doing a Hocus Pocus along. So what I thought I would do is spin up some of this um, Black Llama or the Black Fiber and do a lace shawl. And I think I'm going to have to do a small one, start with something... Uh, fairly basic, but that is what I really want to do in the um, in the spirit of Halloween and all that kind of thing. And you'll have to just ignore my little spindle here. It's still a work in progress, but I needed a free one because all my other ones have been full up and I just couldn't wait any longer to do spinning. So there it is. So I thought I would show to you uh, some of the raw Shetland. Where did it go? Excuse the crinkling. But here is the Shetland before I did anything to it. 
and I don't think you guys can even see this, but it is filled with lanolin and dirt and vegetable matter. But look how long this is, you guys. Like, it is seriously, it is ginormously long. And um, this one's a little bit shorter, but like the ends are all felted together, if you can see that. So I have been spending a whole lot of time pulling them apart. I did a little conditioning. And I also um, didn't wash out all of the lanolin when I was processing this. So it actually came apart fairly easy after I was working with it for a little while. Um, but there is so much, so much nastiness in here that I have had to work through. Which was a challenge, but it was such a fun challenge. And I'm so, so happy to have done my first Shetland fleece. Um, if I haven't told you guys, it is my dream one day to have some little little bitty Shetland sheep. I just think that they are amazing and I would love to have some. So to have some Shetland sheep wool, it has smelled so sheepy. It has been amazing. The lady that I got this from, I opened up all of the bags and um, she, <laughs> she included with it a tiny bag of her dog's hairs. I guess it's a Grand Pyrenees. So when I was opening up all the bags when we got home uh, to let them air out and to keep them from felting and all that, Tut was in the room with me and he almost lost his mind trying to smell all of <laughs> the dog fiber and the sheet. He just didn't know what to do with himself. He was he was just about to lose his mind with all of that. So I'm so excited to see um, what we can do with all of this. I have so much fiber sitting in the back room that I can play with and I'm really excited. I'd love to get uh, spinning on this and get some some fall inspired things going as well as just the natural fiber. I'm, I'm super excited about this. I think uh, on the suggestion of my sister, I think what I'm going to start doing also is a sample kit. So I'll do different types of natural fiber and then probably one dyed fiber. I think what I'd like to do is have options of the spindles that we do or even without a spindle <clears throat> and then um, I'll do like one ounce of Angora, an ounce of uh, an ounce of llama, an ounce of the sheep wool and then maybe um, dyed alpaca or something like that. Um, I think that's I think that's what I'd like to do. So it's four ounces all together, but it's a very wide variety of uh, different things for spinning and just trying them out. I think I think that would be really cool. I think that'd be a whole lot of fun. So I'm gonna try and put together some of those. I have lots to do, guys. Sorry for the crazy episode. Uh, I think that we've got lots of projects coming up that I'm really excited to share with you guys. And that's all that I'll uh, do for this episode, but I'm very excited to do some more and do some more blogging. So if you enjoyed this video, um, please like it, please subscribe to our channel, and we're very excited to share our new upcoming things. And I hope that you guys have a great week and uh, a whole lot of fun crafting. And we'll talk to you later. Bye!